Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Pond5, the world's stock media marketplace. If you're a media maker who needs stock video clips, photos, illustrations, music tracks, or sound effects, check out Pond5 for instant downloads at the best prices anywhere. Check out Pond5 at pond5.com. And for 25% off this month, use code TWIT25. So watch the lip sync on this. This is what you got to watch for this. Going out, hit the town, gonna kill it tonight. Get it started, all the love that I'm feeling tonight. Get everything else, cause it's the weekend. I'm staying out, I'm a party with my friends. See, I don't have to worry about the audio ducking when I'm here in studio. No, you can I can right go, on. woo! Oh. I can just keep interrupting you. Talk. Every, time you every time you start to talk. Welcome to Frame Rate, can... episode 74. I'm Tom Barrett. I'm Brian Brushwood. Hey, Brian, well, I, thanks for flying all the way up just for Frame Rate. Just for Frame Rate, no and I'm going to fly home tomorrow. Yeah. That's the new game plan from that now on. That is fantastic. No, it's good to have you here. Uh, for those of you on the audio... Uh, you'll you'll need to go to our show notes yeah. to check out the lip synced version of that song. Yeah, basically they took what uh, uh, you know, is average song sounds an awful lot like Friday or something. It's, it's an earworm that is stuck in yeah. your brain from now on. But what was cool is they did a great job with the lip syncing, and it's all Star Wars stuff, and it actually made me hate the prequels a little bit less. Really? Yeah, just because it just mashed it all a up. Less and I'm hate like, in the world. Yeah, nice, exactly. Nicely done. Made things right. Let's start off with the big story. This just in, the big story. Uh, so good news uh, for folks who are subscribers of cable and satellite. <laughs> uh, thanks to TV everywhere, you will soon have access to, to Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, yeah, no, this is great. You know, Hulu, it's been in beta for a long time, right. and everyone's wanted to know when they're going to be able to get the Hulu. Hey, when will I be able to authenticate that I'm a subscriber of DirecTV and then be able to watch Hulu. <laughs> Someone out there is frothing at the mouth right now. I mean, the story, of course, is that the entire internet has their panties in a twist over the fact that Hulu is now about to demand that you have a cable subscription and prove it in order to access its programming. This, that's the rumor anyway, Yeah, right? well, New York Post is the one, uh, and Fox Business as well, who are saying, according to their sources, that Hulu and Fox are talking about authentication for certain shows, it's not clear whether this would affect Hulu Plus or just the free version of Hulu. It's not clear if it would affect all shows or just shows on Fox or just sh some shows on Fox. Uh, but essentially, doing the same thing that you do with HBO Go, right. where you have to prove that you subscribe to a service before you get to watch the content. Okay, so here is what I'm going to say that will make everyone's eyeballs explode. I might be okay with this if... My eyeballs just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Clean that up, by all means. I might be okay with this if it means that we can get an HBO Go level of service from Hulu. Because I have a lot of complaints with the Hulu service. I hate the fact that I'm seeing ads all the time. I hate the fact that, um, uh, that it's very spotty on what you have available. The one thing, uh, HBO Go has taken a very Apple-like approach to it, where it's like they, they waited and they launched and it's perfect. It's everything that HBO ever did, all available, instantly on demand. And if Hulu was like that and all, and all I had to do is keep paying for my 60 to $80 fat pipe of cable, I, I think I'd be okay so with wait, that. So you're, wait, you're describing a scenario here, Brian, where the internet latches on to a half-formed rumor, freaks out and gets angry... And then it turns out that the facts won't be nearly as bad 
as the rumor suggested they would be. I see where you're heading with this. turns into a positive. That never happens. It is, this is unprecedented yeah. in the history of the internet. And I'm yeah. glad that we could be the first to break the story. But because the situation I'm in right now is I'm still paying $68 for cable, only Hulu sucks. It's, it's half formed and half baked. And if, if, this is, if this is the price of admission to get Hulu to be what we talk about we actually want, then yeah, I'll do it. But I, I, you know, probably won't. It'll probably be a half minute. Reed Hastings is sitting there going, <laughs> you do that. You change stuff. Change stuff on the internet. Yeah, see, <laughs> see, see how it works out for you. But I will say, it would make sense. Now, I'm not saying the internet won't get angry. Yeah, sure. As a collective. And even me. Uh, but I'm, it would make sense if they say, look, Hulu's going to stay the way it is with its 28-day delays on certain content and its 7-day delays on certain content and certain content not being there. Hulu Plus is going to stay the way it is or get better. Right. Where you should get access to more things because you're paying. But we're going to provide another tier of Hulu that says if you're an authenticated subscriber of a, of a cable television service, you won't have to bother with the 28-day delays. You won't oh. have to bother with the seven-day delays. It'll be like more complete libraries. Service. Because I mean, that's if it is about TV Everywhere, that's what TV Everywhere is about. Right. So if Hulu were just saying, you know what, we're going to provide the infrastructure for TV Everywhere to, to deliver that, and there's still going to be a free Hulu, and it's still going to have all the same situations that it has now... That would make this story make sense to me in a way that shouldn't really be a problem. Right. And except in so much as Hulu already is a problem because it has all these weird restrictions. Right, right. Well, Hulu definitely has problems, and the way that they fix it... Now, notice the way that the whole problem is couched is as Hulu's about to get worse because now you'll have to authenticate. But it's like you could just as easily frame it another way where it's like Hulu Premium is coming. If you have Hulu Pro Plus and you authenticate with your cable bill, all of a sudden you'll have five times more programming and no 28-day delay. If you, if they, This is why these people in this modern age, you have to own the narrative early on. And I, I know that they're, they're still... The reason this is a rumor is because they haven't worked out the deals. They haven't figured out how they're going to market it and all that stuff. But either either you're going to do to the Internet or the Internet's going to do to you. And right now, it sounds like they're letting the Internet the way, do it to the them. The way Hulu should control this message, and already they're, they're having a problem because this rumor's out there, but the way they should control this message is there's nothing changing with Hulu. Right. There's no certain new tier of service of Hulu. But when you go to watch... Uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, or you right. go to watch, actually, uh, Modern Family is a better example. No, and it's it not says, a better example. Well, it's a better example for, for my purposes here. <laughs> it's which not is, a better show, though. Don't talk about I wasn't Always trying Sunny. to say it was a better <laughs> no. show. Oh, go ahead. Nothing is a better show than Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> this is the greatest show ever created Thank you. By I'm, glad. I'm glad we're on the, the same page aliens here. aliens should see. This is good, yeah, yes. Okay, we shouldn't put it on Voyager. But as far as Hulu goes, if, if you go to Modern Family and it says, oh, we only have you know the episode from 28 days ago available. However, if you'd like to see these four episodes that are grayed out, log in here mm -hmm. uh, through your cable provider and you'll get access to them. And that's all it is. It's just like, hey, these aren't available without logging in. That, then I think I think that would probably go down easy. I'll tell you what, if they are smart, they will work out whatever deal they have. When I say they, I mean the cable companies. The cable companies, this is their only salvation. This is the only way they're going to keep that $80 fat pipe of cash coming in. And uh, and they got to they gotta frame it fast. Now, we should, we should give a nod to the conspiracy theorists who say, no, what it's going to be is Hulu is now going to require you to log in to see anything. Because oh. if that happens, Hulu's dead. Oh, yeah, no, they are definitely dead. Say goodbye to Hulu. Absolutely. Wouldn't. Absolutely. Say goodbye, my baby. I almost want to say goodbye right now. Goodbye. It was, it was great, Hulu, while it lasted. Anytime I get a chance to quote Billy Joel in regards to a Hulu story, I'm going to take it. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go to another big That's story. how you do. Stop everything. It's another big story. So, Peter Jackson said, I got an idea. 24 frames per second, that's film. We're digital now. I'm going to shoot at 48 frames per second on The Hobbit, and it's going to look amazing. And so he took some test footage, and he put it in front of the audience, and they said, why does it look like a TV movie? Okay, well, and keep in mind, it actually does look amazing by the numbers. You're seeing, of course, twice the frames, meaning the, the, the frame rate is much, much smoother. It's much more lifelike. And that's the thing, is we don't want our movies to look lifelike. If you have a... Do you have one of those movies, uh, those televisions that does 120 hertz... Uh, Interpolation. Have you seen these? No, I don't have one yep. of these. I have seen them at CES. Right, yeah. and it does. It takes it takes movies and makes them look like cheap soap operas because cheap soap operas are running on whatever whatever context clues in that form of videotape is there. And it's even, a psychological association. Exactly, which is why I think Peter Jackson is right on this to to go for it, or at least to give it a chance. Because the reason we look at it now and we see little clues that we associate with cheap production uh but also now this is legitimate uh if you if it looks like a set and that takes you out of it 
then that's a problem. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that means that sets need to get better or makeup needs to be more subtle well, or and, and, costumes. And that, that is a thing with high definition. Uh, there's a different kind of makeup that you put on for high definition shooting than you put on for videotape shooting because right. videotape just doesn't have the resolution and it hides flaws and it shows things in a different way that means you have to accentuate them more. But if you're accentuating your eye line more on high definition, it's like, oh, look at that. I can see the line of makeup there. You right. can't see that. Right. And so you have to be more subtle. Yeah. So you're right. You have to adapt to the resolution at which you're shooting. I don't know that I could get around it. I couldn't handle the interp- interpolation on my Samsung. I disabled it for everything. It, it ruined. The first thing I watched on my new television was Cool Hand Luke. And whereas instead of being this, this sleepy-eyed, uh, hot afternoon, I'm just seeing three actors on a shabby porch. You know? And it's like... it. it <laughs> It changed everything. So I, it's I don't kind know of if funny that over things it. could become too real to where we're like, no, that's that's just like real life. Actually, yes. that's not what I wanted. I wanted to escape for a while. And we do want that for for sports games. Obviously, you know, it's like it's great on the Super Bowl because you really do feel like you're there watching just through this crystal clear window watching the actual Super Bowl. But uh, but for narrative storytelling, it's going to be very tough. I don't know. Now he did tell uh, Entertainment Weekly. At first, it's unusual because you've never seen a movie like this before. It's literally a new experience, but you know that doesn't last the entire experience of the film, not by any stretch. Uh, The 10 minutes or so that people saw is probably not enough time. You need to, quote, you you settle into it. Well, and I think, actually, I could totally imagine the first 10 10 minutes being very disconcerting, kind of the way 3D is for a lot of people. It's too much, too soon, and they're like, I don't know. But then you lose yourself, and as a result, like to this day, you know, my Avatar 3D viewing experience was exceptional, and it was a very, a very powerful narrative storytelling experience. I could see that happening with The Hobbit as well. But uh, yeah, man, I don't well, envy. He's I very don't... wisely putting the trailer out at 24p. Okay, because he, re- he and this fits with what he told Entertainment Weekly. He's like, well, you need more than 10 minutes to be able to settle into it. So I'm not going to put out a five minute trailer right. at 48 frames and have people go, that looks awful. Right. Uh, if that's the way they're reacting, and that's the way people... How bizarre, though. You know, really... projectionists went to see this test, and they're like, uh, I'm not sure about 48 frames per second now after watching this. Like, they, were, they weren't they were bashing it, all of them. They were just like, ooh, yeah, I didn't really like that. It looked a little made-for-TV movie for me. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say. There's plenty of other examples of stuff like that where we think we want something, and then we get it, and we're like, that's not what we want. Like riches? Yes, wealth, yeah. love, yeah. money, yeah. success. Right. Never get what you want. It'll ruin <laughs> your life. Uh, let's make a movie. Okay, go. Uh, uh, I would like... Wait, it's got to be set in Singapore. Okay. We, we can, we're going to set it in Singapore, so we'll need shots of Singapore. That could be expensive. Uh, uh, no, who, I, what, what, what other elements, though? Uh, well, like, like uh, there should be uh, a, a, a tiger on the loose, maybe from a nature preserve. Tiger goes loose in Singapore. Tiger goes loose in Singapore. We'll have to that's, get a tiger, too. That's a lot. Of, that's an insurance nightmare. You know what? Actually, I think we should use our sponsor. For this episode of Frame Rate, Pond Five. Yeah, Pond Five, the world's stock media marketplace. Uh, many of you are media makers like us. You're involved in making blogs, websites, videos, films, apps, other types of media. If you would like to make a movie that is set in Singapore with a tiger, you can do it for cheap with Pond Five. High quality stuff. When I say cheap, I mean you don't pay through the nose. You're paying a reasonable amount to get stock footage of Singapore, stock footage of tigers. Pretty much anything you think of is available on there. I'll tell you what. Photos, vector illustrations, music tracks, sound effects, motion graphics, templates, all kinds of things. Sound effects, all of which can be downloaded instantly for legal use in virtually any media production. I just searched for Tiger Attack. There he is. Look at all those tigers. See, tons of tigers. We got tigers all over the place. You want tigers? We got we got uh, albino tigers. We got regular yellow tigers. I'm obviously not a zoologist. Yeah. Uh, obviously Uh, all of it can be downloaded instantly for legal use in virtually any media production and you don't pay royalties you pay once you use it in your thing and you're good and if you're out there shooting tigers on video uh, and and recording video you can upload it to Pond5 and make money selling see that's what I like is that it's a two way street you can make money on Pond5 or you can buy stuff now here's the other thing we never brought this up you can use this for immoral uses like you could Take a bunch of photos, yes. and then have your friends over and say, I went on safari recently. Uh, look at these amazing photos I took. Look at these tiger photos I took. They can't stop you. Yeah, you're, paying, you're paying for it. Yeah. yeah. Especially use the promo code Twitter. Anything you can imagine. Uh, Pond5 is a dynamic marketplace where you can upload <laughs> pro-quality content, set your own prices, and receive industry-leading royalties on every sale. 
Uh, it's great for everybody. If you're a media maker working with video, with images, with sound, don't forget the sound effects there. Go right now. P-O-N-D, the number 5.com. Pond5.com. Check it out. And Pond5 has a special offer for our audience members. You will not get eaten by a shark and 25% off your purchase this month wait, wait, when wait. you use coupon code TWIT25. Can you hear that? Sounds like heavy breathing. That's a heavy breathing tiger. Hold on. Maybe this one? Pond5.com. Use the code TWIT25. If you don't go to Pond5.com and use the code TWIT25, we cannot guarantee that you won't be eaten by a shark. <laughs> yeah, we cannot, dis- we can't. We cannot guarantee your safety. Be. We just can't. I mean, we can't. That's correct. And we thank Pond5 for their support of frame rate. <laughs> now it is time for us to take a dip into the slipstream. The slipstream. Okay, AOL launching AOL On, a video network designed to do exactly the wrong thing. Drive video <laughs> ad sales. Yeah, yeah I, uh, I, I sort of peruse this. I, I don't get it. Walk, walk me through this one. Uh, it's a premium content portal that will work across desktops, mobile platforms, all those buzzwords that you're used to hearing. Sure. Uh, Social media. Ron Harnavo, SVP of AOL, makes it clear that it's nothing like YouTube, no dogs on skateboards. It brings together video offerings from... The various content portals, Huffington Post, TechCrunch, and Gadget. Uh, 14 properties in all with a reach of 57 million customers. It will also include a program of commissioned original content like Digital Justice, Little Women, Big Cars, and Next Door Hero. All right, so this is this sounds close to what Bright Cove did a while ago. Bright Cove mm-hmm. early on was trying to be a competitor to YouTube, and then they realized that we're not going to be able to compete with YouTube, so they completely shut off access to the public. And they say, we are now only providing video for premium distributors. Uh, some of this video is under the AOL umbrella, uh, at, but they want to sell ads. They want, okay. to, they want to drive video There's ads. There's nothing wrong. We need sales. more money in the video online. So you'll be able to watch it, and they'll be able to sell ads against it. And that's always the wrong motivation. I don't know. Maybe that's not their real motivation, but that's the way it's being pitched in this TechCrunch story uh, as a way to sell video ads. And if you start there, I just don't think you're going to do well. <laughs> well, I don't, I, well, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what they actually You've got to start with create. the content. Sure. Sure. First. Yeah. I'm saying that for it can ever. secretly be about the money, but you got to pretend like it's not about the money. Well, no, it's obviously going to be about the money. But if you say, like, I want to make some money, what should I do? You end up at porn. Yes. I mean, don't start there. You start with, like, hey, I want to do this great thing, and I think I can make some money off it and have it pay my way. Right. So how do I make the money off the great thing? Right. But you got to have the great thing to begin with. You do have to have a great thing. Important, uh, too. Speaking of making money, uh, TechCrunch has a rumor. You can recuse yourself from this story if you want. I'm not going to recuse myself. I'm going to opinionate three, all over it. Uh, in acquisition talks with the Discovery Channel. This is all a rumor. Uh, rumored price between 30 to $40 million, uh, similar to what Google paid for Next New Networks when they sold it to YouTube. Um, so yeah, well the uh, I don't know. So I have no idea. First of all, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the last person. For those of you guys who don't know, I host a show called Scam School over on the Revision Three Network. And for those of you who don't know, I used to host a show called Top Five, which was canceled from the Revision Three Network. Yeah, so not that he's bitter, I'm, but I'm uh, not really. <laughs> I know, but I can say that they it were makes really you nice look about it, To be honest, I, <laughs> but I, don't know what but uh, I was jazzed. You know, one of my goals of all time has been to have a show, host my own show on the Discovery Channel. And so, uh, and so now, uh, Scam School, they, they, I know they did some kind of partnership, and Scam School is now on the life section over at uh, uh, discovery.com. So, uh, it, to be honest, it's like, uh, and, and again, I'm on the outside, I don't know nothing, but if Revision 3 is going to get bought by anyone, I'd be, I'd be glad if it's Discovery. That's, I, they seem like a good outfit. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they have a decent web presence. They, they say something about them not having an especially strong web presence, but they've got HowStuffWorks.com. Not for video, Discovery.com. I mean, they, they have a little they bit. They have a little bit of video. video right. This would be like kind of the crown jewel right. amongst what I think is actually a fairly strong web Well, and think about the lineup over at Revision 3 as well. You have all the educational stuff like Techzilla and, uh, you know, the HD Nation segments, and, and there's a lot of information content that people go to Revision 3. I think it is a good match. When I was a tech- TV, I was rooting for Scripps Howard or Discovery to buy Tech TV when Paul Allen put it up for sale. Yeah. Because I felt like we fit. And you were like, thrilled if it with was G4. Like food, with Comcast. HG Tech. How perfect is that? Or Discovery, like we've got science and space and tech. Uh, Discovery was like barely interested at all. Scripps was apparently a little more interested, but then they dropped out. Man, what might have been? With yeah, that? That's no. crazy. All right, uh, Apple in the rumor, r- rumor about Apple? I know, crazy, huh? Uh, but Reuters was reporting late last week that Apple began talks earlier this year to stream films owned by Epics, 
which is backed by three major movie studios. We hear lots of rumors about Apple creating a streaming service. We hear lots of rumors about Apple creating some more like closer partnership with, with different movie studios. This could have simply been them going to Epics, which, by the way, is owned by Lionsgate, MGM, and Viacom's Paramount Pictures. It could have been going to them saying, we want to do iCloud stuff. Right. It could have simply been that. It could be the long-expected Apple television that they're trying to create some sort of service behind, and they were just talking to Epics as part of that. Uh, but a lot of people latched onto this rumor and said, you know, Epics owns all their own stuff. Mm-hmm. They're not making very good headway in the traditional cable satellite channels, which they had been, you know, which they're trying to compete with the likes of an HBO and Showtime. Why doesn't Epics just go straight to the internet? Say, forget it. You know what? Let's create HBO Go, but without having to have a cable or, or satellite uh, subscription to do it. I, I got to admit, uh, part of my brain shuts down as soon as I hear the words Apple rumor. It's like I, I just instantly, the, yeah, the, shield, get, the shields get, go up. Get past the Apple part of it. And right. just like, what if Epix said, you know, we don't care if it's on Apple or Roku or wherever. We are not going to have an Epix app that you can install across multiple platforms. You pay $10 a month and you get all of our movies. Dude. That, now that's and, and in fact, this goes back to when we were at uh, CES two years ago. I remember talking to the folks over at Stars, and they were and I was like, "Hey, man, you guys are making Netflix into the rock stars that they are." They're like, "Yeah, we know it's kind of a problem." Yeah, we don't really love it's, that. It's, yeah, exactly. Nobody is great for and Netflix. What they didn't not say so great at the time us. is we won't be doing that for much longer. Exactly. Turned out to be true. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Netflix, uh, Netflix on the rise at the expense of kids' television, according to a Verge story. Uh, fewer children, actually Bernstein Research is, is putting these numbers, fewer children watching television and more of them watching Netflix. Nickelodeon's ratings declined 6% in streaming households despite seeing 2% growing elsewhere. And Teen Nick saw an 11% drop amongst Netflix users while increasing viewership 26% in non-streaming households. I totally believe this and understand it because you realize that uh, the only reason, and we, as we said before, the only reason I still have full cable is because uh, of the kids' programming, but the kids have stopped watching it. They're watching My Little Pony on Netflix, and now we're just buying a few things. We'll buy a few seasons on iTunes. And remember that kids are programmed to want to watch repeat programming over and over and over again. That was the big revelation when, I think it was PBS did it back in, in the early 80s, where they showed the same episode on Monday. Monday as on Thursday, and the viewership was higher on Thursday because it was the same like, thing. Oh, I've seen it again. Exactly, awesome. exactly. And, and Netflix is perfect for people who want to rewatch the same content over and over and over again. Uh, and uh, our DVR, our cable box broke for a month, and we never even knew it. Because, and then that's when I realized, oh, like, wow, yeah, wow. I guess, I guess we can try to cut the cable now. <laughs> so, yeah, interesting. All right, let's set something on top of our tubes, but not not tie them or cut them. Tube tops. That was close. <laughs> I got, yeah, you have to, Chad's a robot. You have to program the voice. He's like Siri that way. Yeah. Chad, tube tops. Uh, <laughs> Google TV gets updated YouTube app with recommendations and channel search. Now, obviously, you have to have a Google TV-enabled television or set-top box uh, for this to matter to you. But Google has made YouTube channels on Google TV searchable and adding, uh, af- after adding a channel page in their last update. Uh, so this is a nice tweak to the interface. Which I, as a person who is contributing a show to a channel on YouTube, right. have come up across, like, how do you get to this freaking channels? Well, now it's much easier. Right. Well, I'll tell you, man, I'm in such a weird space with Google TV. I cannot wait to get one, but I know the n- new batch of them, the no- new hardware is still a couple months off. LG coming out with a whole new batch of TVs that will have Google TV built in. Priced at $1,700 for a 47-inch model, $2,300 for a 55-inch. The G2 series uh, is is coming soon to uh, somewhere near you in May. God, I would love it if I was just way wrong about my opinion on televisions and if, like, I got one of these and the the Google TV experience was just so seamless that I didn't want it to be a separate box. We have two more months until Eric Schmidt's prediction that by mid-year, every television on, on the shelf at your local store will have Google TV. It's on its way. It's L- on its way, bro. LG. LG's in. See? So we just need Samsung, Vizio, and Sony. That's one down. Yeah. <laughs> next next Panasonic, manufacturer. Samsung, LG, Sony, we'll be good. All right. Now we will move on to Film Film. See? That was smooth. Yeah. You did that right. <laughs> Chad, play intro, Film Film. See? Chad, revive the series Jericho because I loved it. <laughs> 
Did you really love Jericho? I love it. Did you know I, I, no, I never, I never got into it. I'm a sucker for a post-apocalyptic scenario. Okay. Just put that out there first. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the idea is small town in Kansas, uh, a young, young son who's, who's been off doing who knows what in Iraq, comes back to the town, trying to make up with his dad who he never got along with, and all of a sudden, mushroom cloud Uh-oh. off towards Denver. All communications cut off. What's going on? And that's season one is what's going on. They're trying to figure it all out from then on. And it's trying to make their way in a post-apocalyptic world where there is no more outside communications, no more resources coming in from factories. Wow. How do you make things work? Dude, uh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'm sure it was a success that never got canceled. So go watch it on Netflix because they have the <laughs> two seasons that they were able to squeeze out there. But it is exactly one of those kinds of things like Arrested Development where people said, well, probably the DVR culture and the fact that it was targeted towards younger folks killed it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Netflix is talking about picking it up. They're actually talking to CBS who produced it and saying, hey, you want to produce it for I'll Netflix? I'll tell you what, if... if- Arrested Development can come back from the grave than anything can. Because think about it. Arrested Development had had everything going against it. And that it had been so long since its cancellations. And its numbers were so soft. And, all, and more importantly, all of its primary actors had gone on to hugely successful other products, projects. It's like, how on earth was that ever going to come back? And it did. So if it can, then, uh, yeah, there's hope for Jericho. And Les Moonves, three months ago, said that he was talking to Netflix about producing shows. Uh, so, so... You know, apparently this is the one he was referring to. All right. If you had, let's say a genie just popped out of the this television right here. Hi, genie. And said, you can only watch the full trailer for Prometheus or Dark Knight Rises. Choose. Choose now. Prometheus. Yeah. No, I think so, too. That's only because I have Avengers in the movie draft, though. Okay. <laughs> Dark Knight Rises looks uh, looks good, but man, look at Prometheus. Okay, yeah. Now, this is an international trailer. io9 did a fantastic breakdown, scene by scene, of everything you see in here. And the, the thing you have to be aware of is that this is going to spoil the crap out of the movie. Then I don't want to Because unlike the other trailers, They've it's, been it's in chronological order. It explains the plot. I mean, it's like a typical trailer, right? It doesn't it doesn't spoil it any more than a typical trailer Chad, does. Chad, stop, but stop playing this. I is, don't want It is going to show you the path of the movie, which the other trailers haven't. I have not been so excited for a science fiction property in so long. And it's like Ridley Scott's like one of those, um, you know, why can't I quit you directors where it's like I keep I, yeah. I love his background so much. You know, and then it's like even, you know, I, I ended up hating Gladiator, but I wanted so much to like it going into it. And yeah. It's, yeah. I, watching this Prometheus trailer made me want to go rewatch all the Alien movies, even knowing that he has said over and over it's not going to be a direct connection. Yeah, but I don't care. It's I don't in care that either. world. Yeah, and it's, exactly. and it's got that flavor, you know? All right, but there is the Dark Knight trailer out there. Uh, and frankly, this one got me really excited for the dark knight and it has reaffirmed all of my suspicions that the avengers as good as it's going to do this weekend is not going to outdo the dark knight i don't like at best neck and neck i don't know the number one thing you notice about this trailer is how utterly stark it is it's so silent and it just sits there that's the avengers they have tony stark Uh, (laughs) yes that's true uh but it's like this one is so it's like it gets uncomfortably close to you and just stands there. And it's like, oh, my God, what is this going to be? It's intimidating. It's yeah. an intimidating trailer. Well, And what's great is it's not like, oh, yeah, this is kind of like the Joker again. You know, like it, it's a different Totally movie. different story. Yeah. Yeah. It's a different story. But it's still Chris Nolan. Uh, I disagree, though. Like I actually think the Avengers, uh, I mean, have you seen all the hype for the Avengers? You know, 97% positive reviews oh, yeah. on Rotten no, Tomatoes. I, yeah, I know. It's gonna, I think the Avengers will have massive, massive repeat viewing I, mean, well, I don't know. A lot of people went back and saw it's a Dark weird, It's a weird summer. It's heavy on both ends. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Patrick Delahanty for pointing out uh, this fandom post about sci-fi offering up their scripted development slate. They do this around oh, this great. time every year. So they're getting into science fiction now. Good yeah, for it, them. It looks like it, actually. <laughs> now, remember when we, we looked at this and they were like all reality shows? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was last year or a year before. This time it's the opposite. Uh, Rewind revolves around a team of military field opera- operatives and civilian scientists who must use untested technology to travel back in time. Hey, it's sci-fi. That's cool. The Adjustment Bureau, based on the hit movie starring Matt Damon. Uh, Guardian Angel type agents work to keep the world working according to plan. High Moon, based on the novel The Lotus Caves by John Christopher. Uh, Out of this world explores a world where the countries of Earth have established colonies to mine the moon's resources. Yeah. Uh, Untitled Booster Gold Project. Sure. What is Booster Gold? Uh, based, on, <laughs> based on the best-selling DC comic. 
The story of a washed up athlete from the future who travels back to the present hopes of becoming the greatest superhero a of all time. Washed up athlete from the future. That's so what I would do. Like, I if I went back to 1920, I'd be like, look at my physique. I am, I am a superhuman. I am superhuman. <laughs> Uh, generations of an alien family and the family, intergalactic war aftermath, Defender. I mean, these are all uh, essentially, there is, some of them are based on comics, but they're all sci-fi. Seeing things based on the comic Grey Legion from Platinum Studios. Uh, this, is, this is solid. This is good. I hope, I, hope, uh, I hope that they run with the sci-fi, although I will say there's, there's uh, secret rumblings <laughs> I'm hearing about one reality-based show on sci-fi that I'm very excited about, but there's no details yet. I can't tell you. Uh, Secret Rumblings is my Atlantic Star cover band. <laughs> Star Trek The Next Generation, first full Blu-ray season arrives July 24th. Thank goodness. So they decided to go for it. Yeah, yeah, it's going to happen. And yeah, you do have to start with season one. My but- brother is re-watching all of The Next Generations straight through. Um, it's, uh, I, I, try, I told you I tried to get my daughter to watch it, but she just didn't know what to make of it. You know, It's like, is it action? There's a lot of standing around talking. I don't understand half of this. What is happening, Dad? Why are their hairstyles so weird? And I just, I just had no answer. I'm like, it's, um, it's Star Trek, sweetie. Uh, they, it's Star Trek. they go to red alerts, and then they say to reroute power a bunch. Aliens. And reverse the polarity. Some kind of moral conundrum, maybe? Tachyon, I don't know. Beam, we went back and watched My Little beam. Pony. Oh, well. Yeah, it's a different world <laughs> than where we come from. Let's move on to the summer movie draft. Summer Movie Draft is brought to you by The Raven. You don't have to go watch it, but buy a ticket to The Raven. <laughs> uh, that was my movie last that's, week. That's good journalism there, Tom. Seven, <laughs> seven Very important. million. Wait, wow. did I beat you? Yeah, Lockout beat The Raven. I, Aha, I, and you paid more for The Raven than I, I paid know, for Lockout. I paid eight and you paid seven. Yeah. Uh, barely worth buying at all. No, right? I mean, but you can sit, you're, you're sitting pretty, this is it, man. Next week, or th- three days, three days, the money spigot, you're going to be choking on all the cash just pouring into your mouth like, oh, oh, oh. I'm just, you know what, though? I, I think you're right. Uh, I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, you know what? Yes, I'm going to be <laughs> freaking going. rich. But I will be sitting there waiting with an upset stomach until July 20th to see how the Dark Knight does. I'll tell you what, you will know... <sighs> Okay, so Avengers, I think we can agree. Rock of Ages versus The Raven may settle this (laughs) because Sarah has Rock of Ages and I have The Raven. So around the corner, you realize I've got a pretty big, uh, this is, this is uh, May. This is my May. Like I'm, instead of the uh, April Fool, I'm the May, the May May flower. flower, Yeah. But, uh, but I'll tell you, here's what, here's what I got. Uh, Dark Shadows, and I went and I looked up what they're expecting. It looks good, actually. It looks good, and the main actor died. The guy who played Bart Barabbas, Barnabas, whatever. Anyway, he died, so Not hopefully. Johnny Depp. No, but the original right. Dark Shadows <laughs> guy. Uh, the Dictator, I think, you know, it'd be a soft uh, 60, 70 million. Battleship is looking like 120 million. Men in Black 3 is projected to make between 180 to 210 million that, dollars. Yeah. I think that's going to be the dark horse that, uh, or let me put it this way. If it's not, I'm totally screwed. But if if those four movies combined are able to do 400 million plus, and I don't see any reason that they couldn't, then then I'm still in this thing. Yeah. Well, I actually, I mean, in all in all seriousness, uh, I think it hinges for me on Total Recall and Paranorman. Yep. Because those are my secondary movies. The Raven I knew wasn't going to make a lot, so that's almost irrelevant. But uh, you know, Dark Knight Rises, the campaign, the Expendables Two, Rock of Ages, what Sarah has, it depends on the Expendables Two and campaign for her. Right. Uh, and you've got. An even number of skyscrapers, you know, but I none of them are the biggest skyscrapers. Correct, correct. Yeah. Well, and keep in mind also, for what I paid, you paid $63 for the Avengers. Uh, my total, let's see, 45 56 I paid uh, $68, so I paid $5 more for four movies, Dark Shadows, Dictator, Battle- Battleship, and MIB3. Yeah. So, I don't know. We'll see. Let's move on to what we're watching. <laughs> what we're watching. We are watching. I don't know if it's if the camera switched yeah, on right. us. Okay. There. <laughs> Got a good peripheral vision for that to work. Uh, so uh, I'll just get out of the way. I watched Game of Thrones, Mad Men, and Eureka like I always do. We watched a couple episodes of Buffy. We're still making our way through all seven how, seasons. How far are you in Buffy? We're uh, in the season five now. Okay. So uh, season four was my favorite, favorite season. Oh, is it really? Yeah. 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 yeah a lot of people said Although season I, three was the best, but. I don't really love the love interest for Buffy. I can't even remember his name. Uh, Finn. Finley. Finley. Yeah. The, yeah. One of the, the soldier guy, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I love that whole. The whole idea of Adam's like, pretty cool. Uh, I don't want to say what the future love interest is, but it is very interesting. Angel? I'm not. No, it's not. Willow. 
No, no. All right. now, <laughs> well, actually, uh, there is some of that. Let's uh, let's move on to what you've been watching. Oh, which I, actually, I, I watched Cabin in the Woods, the movie. Yes, and we'll we will talk that about that. The spoiler, spoiler zone, zone right? But what else you've been? Uh, I watched Veep. Loved it. I want to watch that. Loved I just didn't get a chance to watch it. it. Yeah, and, uh, it sounds like it's great. I, I think G- Julia Louis Dreyfus has a lot of chops and just is always in the wrong project for her. But it's like you know, as they're, they're kind of riffing on this idea of, of of Sarah Palin if she was the vice president. Uh, is what they seem to be, at least from an aesthetic point of view. Uh, of course, Game of Thrones. Uh, continuing to watch Legend of Korra. Let me tell you, man, Legend of Korra is smart, and it is clearly written for college students. It is, and at this point, I'm not even going to say, if it's the difference between bothering to check it out and never getting around to it, then if you have to skip Avatar The Last Airbender, then skip it. You should go back and watch all three seasons of that, but if not, just check out uh, Legend of Korra. And I watched uh, People vs. George Lucas, which is like the internet sat in a closet, enraged for 30 minutes, and when it came out, it looked and it had apparently crapped out an egg of George Lucas' frustration. Uh, and it was, but it was eminently watchable. It wasn't just nerd rage. It was like, it, it started off, you know, starts off with the story of why we love Star Wars to begin with, why we're mad at, uh, at George Lucas, and at the end of it, it says, but you know what, at the end of the day, he brought you Star Wars, so shut the hell up. Yeah. So it's like, he can I, do whatever he wants to. It. I agree. And Marin County apparently doesn't agree. Because they aren't allowing him to build his project. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Marin Stepped County something says, we don't care if you made Star Wars. <laughs> De- yeah, De- but definitely check out, uh, I enjoyed that immensely. It's worth, worth checking out. And we'll talk about um, uh, Cabin in the Woods afterwards. Game of Thrones, of course. Finish up with some feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Frame Rate. Oh, yeah. Thought we were going to do a three-part harmony there. Oh, sorry, I was reading Derek's email already. Uh, he said, so last week, I found myself with nothing to watch on television. Taking a cue from all the episodes of Framerate I've seen, I decided to watch original programming on YouTube through my Xbox. I was pleasantly surprised with the outcome, as I found myself enjoying geeky shows about tabletop games, sci-fi fantasy novels. Kiss up. Uh, there were a few minor blips when it came to buffering. Uh, still, it was such a great experience that I really gave more thought to the whole cord-cutting concept. And then came the upfronts. Though I work in digital media, I've been included in some of the TV upfronts. To be honest, I was blown away. Not just at the slate of upcoming programs and shows in the upcoming months, but even at the scale and level of professionalism these marketing decks, videos, presentations had. I mean, it helps to get millions of dollars compared to normal online display video sites, but I can definitely see why marketers and advertisers still favor traditional broadcast cable over other forms of media. That being said, I'm pretty excited to update you guys that an all-digital, heavy online video advertising campaign I put together actually got approved over a mixed plan with traditional TV. Industry shifts rarely occur overnight, but things are slowly changing. And this is, uh, this is Derek Chen. Yeah, this is D-Dog show. in the chat. Yeah, no, he's fantastic. Good uh, update. Thanks, yeah, no, I, lo- I, love, I love the fact that we have a mole in the industry know, telling, right? us, uh, telling us what we're doing. Uh, Sean writes us, uh, frame rate crew, now I know you guys haven't done an ethical versus legal in a while, but I think I have an interesting Illegal. one. I, yeah, and ethical. There, that's the answer to all of them. I recently took over as network administrator at the company I work for. In the process of cleaning the data room, I stumbled upon an external hard drive that my predecessor left behind. That's where it gets interesting. This hard drive has 30 to 40 clearly pirated movies, most of which were garbage or movies I've already seen. My question, what is your opinion on the legal and ethical implications of me deciding to watch a few of the ones that actually looked interesting? I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Um, this, is a, this, is a, this is an interesting one, watching them it's illegal for them to be on that disc it's illegal to be and so i guess it's illegal for you to keep them on the disc long enough to watch them the actual act of watching them isn't illegal i I don't think i agree i don't i think it's not illegal and i think it's distribution that's illegal i think it's sitting on the disc is not illegal Well, he's an it administrator and so he is liable for having it on the disc right but but the illegal activity was the putting it onto the disc for, well, if that were the case, YouTube would never get a takedown notice because so the video is just sitting there. Well, I, well, but they are distributing it. They are they are providing yeah, the service to to, I don't know. to I, send I, it I from think, one party he, to another. I think another. he still has an incumbent. Uh, I, I think he he still it's, he has an incumbent responsibility to not have them hosted on the disc. I guess if he takes the disc out and puts it on the shelf, that's not illegal. All right, I got another one if for you. Networks. Uh, I meant to bring this up. I forgot. Uh, 
this is a, uh, I'm sure it's totally illegal, right? But I'm trying so hard to play by the rules for Legend of Korra that I actually went and figured out which channel is Nickelodeon, went to 1606 on Time Warner, found the next upcoming uh, show of it, saw the description that it's the next episode that I haven't seen yet, sat there and physically waited with my daughter for 1030 to roll around, and the description was wrong Ooh. on Time Warner's, and we watched a stupid episode of SpongeBob SquarePants. I, let me, I'm not going to say how, but we definitely watched... Legend of Korra up and in 20 minutes afterwards. Uh, legal? Ethical? No, you tell- totally not legal, That's- but like, whatever. <laughs> uh, let's go to J. Brian Holge. Holge? Uh, says to frame rate, BT. Justin Robert Young is absolutely 100% correct. Our plan is to subscribe to Netflix streaming, watch every new episode of Arrested Development, then cancel streaming, and I can't be the only one. Do you think that? I- so that's his plan. That's your plan. See, what Netflix is gambling on is that you will do that plan, but then get into Netflix and go, oh, but I really like watching all these old Star Treks, or oh, I didn't know these movies were there, or oh, check this Lily Hammer. I'll out. tell you, I'll tell you what, there's a reason that Squarespace keeps coming back as a sponsor for Friend NSFW, even though like we, we were feeling bad. We're like, hey, we're at, you realize we're telling people to go use the free trial to make joke websites just for grins, knowing that they'll expire in two, two weeks. They're like, yeah, that's great. That means they're using the tools. That's what we want. We want them to use the tools because then they'll want to keep using the exactly, tools. Exactly, when yeah. they have, when they're in that position. So it's, again, it's like, I agree. It's like, I'm sure that is your plan, but whether or not it turns out that way, uh, not. Uh, we got a long rambling email from Naeem Siddiqui, but we know him better as Kuhan. Uh, the gist of it was, I was watching last week's What We're Watching segment and totally agreed with Brian's sentiment that The Legend of Korra is appealing to college kids. I actually thought the same thing while watching it. It did get me thinking on the culture of cartoons and how it's changed over the past 20 years. My parents and even my brother, who's 26, always find it a little strange when I watch cartoons or Super Sentai, the little Japanese show upon which uh, Power Rangers is based. Uh, I do a podcast about it. He plugs his podcast. Kuhan, have some class. Uh, and then, <laughs> <laughs> like a stupid podcast. Okay, no, okay. It's a, okay. <laughs> process, Sentai Power Just look up Sentai Power Rangers on iTunes because they're young. Anyway, his question is, in a world with Cowboy Bebop or Batman the Animated Series, is the opinion of cartoons changing or is it still the domain of kids' shows? I think it's changed. I think it's changed. I, I agree. I, I honestly agree. do, because the only people I say, like, oh, it's a cartoon, that's for kids, are, are really people over 60. Yes. Like, seriously. I agree. I, even even but, people older than me now, believe keep, that cartoons can be for adults. Keep in mind, though, he's saying that, that his brother or sister, who's 26, says, yeah, his brother is 26. I think that's pretty rare. Yeah, I, I think it's yeah, increasingly rare. It's, it's yeah. never going to be black and white, but I think right. we're, we're seeing that sea change occur. He has several PSs, of one of which is, please tell people how to spell your Twitter handle so that I don't have to. He runs Ace Detect Spelled Wrong. I so saw that. that. people spell it wrong, he could forward them to me. Uh, it's A-C-E-D-T-E-C-T. What can I do? Yeah. Other it's than change it. Super simple. I really appreciate that Kuhan does that as a public service. Dude, right? I, they're all, pretty awesome. uh, all yeah. of Chat Realm, they're amazing like that. All right, folks. Uh, thanks, everybody. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash FR. We're going to be doing the spoiler zone coming up. Drop after us the emails. Show. Emails. Frame rate at twit.tv is the email address. Yeah. We'll either see you in the spoiler zone or, or next see week. You next time. Now it's time for the end of the show, and then we're gonna go into the spoiler zone. Oh, yeah. Silent Green is people! All right. We went right into the spoiler zone, so just in case you're still running for the stop button. Yes, we will, we will very Hurry. slowly start to ruin Cabin, Cabin in, in the, the Woods. woods. Uh, all right, and we're going to get way spoilery up in this business. So if you yeah. have not seen it, let me tell you that it is a good enough movie, in my opinion. <laughs> that was the best moment. <laughs> uh, it, it is a good enough movie that you, if there's a chance you'll see it, try to see it not knowing anything about it. It's so worth it. That is the first thing I will say, and it's mildly unspoilery for me to say it, to give you a little extra time, is I really wish I went to this movie not knowing a single thing about it. Right. Because I liked it. What did you I know? I didn't love it. What did you know? And I knew that it had a secondary thing. I knew that there was a twist. You knew, you knew it was a I knew a there was a second movie. I, I knew it was a horror movie by Joss Whedon and that there was a secondary storyline that was kind of sci-fi. Oh, you knew even that. No, see, all and I knew so was, it was... I came in, and as soon as that opening scene happens, and, and this is what Justin Robert Young argued, he's like, well, the opening scene is spoilery. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, yeah, but I didn't know why. 
Right. But I knew I knew now that it was. Right. And so as soon as I saw it, I was like, okay, so this is the secondary storyline. Right. And that took something away. Uh, and and I still I still enjoy, I enjoyed it a lot. And I really loved the secondary storyline. So but there it was not that that moment of like, oh my god, it's twisting my mind. I didn't get that. Right. And that's fine. But but there is. Uh, I have previously used uh, Men in Black as my example of good direction in that you do things that are highly improbable, that don't necessarily make consistent internal sense, and yet you just don't care because you're having too much fun. Uh, there are massive aspects of this story that make absolutely zero sense. I mean, I, I mean, th- you know, why do they have to dress it up with so much carnival atmosphere for, oh, for, the, right. for this, you know, yeah. what, what they're doing? Uh, but... Regardless, uh, I could not care less. I loved every second of it. It was great to identify the specific movies and specific genres that they were riffing on. With you know, the, clearly, okay, that's Hellraiser. Yeah. Okay, that's you know. It, well, I, and and that's the thing. Uh, I was with my wife Eileen, who's not a big horror aficionado, and she still loved it. Yeah. I, 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 she still liked it. Yeah. A lot. She had the same reaction as me, as like, eh, I didn't love it, but I liked it a lot. Uh, and 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 she didn't get all those references, but still almost had the same experience as me. So I think that's just like another nice extra layer of frosting on top of right. it. But the story itself is interesting enough. And even if you don't get the references, you're going to enjoy it. Correct. And, and I think to put it specifically, I didn't love it the way I love Fight Club or the original Matrix or something I like that. I just broke the first rule. But, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Fights Club. It's a different, totally different oh, franchise. Right. Uh, I didn't love the movie itself, but I loved that the movie existed and how they... I loved the way it ended. It's like when you've smelled the incoming, you're like, oh my God, are they really going to let it end this way? Yes, they did! It was and that awesome. Was, you know, I had that exact feeling at the end of Cabin in the Woods uh, when, they're, when they're headed towards the ending, and I'm like, are they going to twist out of this? Are they, are they? I'm like, they should just leave it. They should just leave it. Oh my God, they left it. Yes. And I was very yes. happy about well, that. Well, and uh, I'll tell you what, I also, I totally... Nailed Sigourney Weaver's voice. That sounded wrong. Voice. Uh, yes. <laughs> like, because uh, that's her Please on the PA system. That's <laughs> the PA system. You hear the this generic female I voice. I, I, I recognize it, but I couldn't place it. I, so I told, when she I'm, came I'm like, on that screen, is Sigourney like, Weaver. Oh, yeah. That's who that was. Yeah, yeah. that was phenomenal. Yeah, was so good. Uh, yeah, definitely worth seeing. Definitely worth your seven bucks. Man, this is, this is Joss Whedon's year. After getting kicked around by Hollywood for a decade, he was the king of beloved franchises that made no money until this year, and now he's going to create the number one highest box office grossing, most beloved geek movie of all time this year. He's back on and top. he'll have 120 days to enjoy it, or however long until... Until Dark Knight steals the prize from him. Yeah, it, it, now he can stop obsessing over how much better Buffy was than Felicity and how J.J. has passed him up. He can be like, I'm back. <laughs> do, you think, do you think that's what he no, did? No, I don't, I don't think like, he does that like, at all. Yeah. He's like, J.J. did Star, Star Trek. I did, I did Dollhouse. Yeah. Buffy would have taken Felicity and stabbed her in the heart. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, can't wait. Game of Thrones real quickly before we have to go. Yeah, I could tell that the television show, a lot more magic happening now. And you're starting to see, just as in the books, yeah, the yeah. magic you know, ramps up and comes online. I'm surprised how fast we're going because it's a television show. Right, right. It seems like, I'm like, have we skipped a bunch? No, I can't think of anything major that we've skipped. But we're already with, you know, the night is full of terrors coming out. Yep, yep. Dang, yeah. Well, and the uh, and the fact that you're starting to see, you saw your first, the magicians in Karth, you see them doing a little bit of their tricks, and, uh, uh, you know, of course, you see a little more of the dragons, and, of course, that, that shadow thing. Uh, Much less nudity on the last episode of Game of Thrones uh, wait, than you, there had, there would have been nude-tastic, which some people are like, ah, I don't really, damn, no, I'm not really okay, cool so with that. Game of this, Thrones. But this last episode... Not so much nudity, and in Karth, where the women are only supposed to be wearing half uh, half a top. That's because there's plenty of killing. There's if you, if you have killing, ah, you don't a, need the boobies. Conservative. If, if you have intrigue, conservation. Of, exactly. Yeah. It, uh, boobies can either be created or destroyed. They merely yeah. change form to assassinations. I see. There's <laughs> probably a, a doctoral thesis. In there, there probably is about the psychological psychological state of the American. So male. tell me if you're on the same page as this. Uh, much as the books, you start to smell where stuff's headed, and then you're just like okay let's get there let's get there and you're perpetually wanting to 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 get to this big conflict that you know is going to happen and then when it happens it's just like so much so fast it's i'm really feeling that with the show right now i am feeling that too and the one thing that gives me hope is that i have read that the entire episode named blackwater is going to be devoted to blackwater 
the Doobie, Doobie Brothers the, song. To, 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 to the roll black water, <laughs> keep on rolling. Mississippi Moon wants Wester to keep Rose on shining. Yeah. Means winter's coming. All right. Uh, no, I think that that they're going to that, that episode is supposed to be immense and really like take you. Oh, you're the talking. Battle. Yeah, that's that's when uh, with the chain and all the yeah the, and yeah. the green fire that we just saw. And I'll tell you what, man, Tyrion is continuing to kill it, and uh, yes, so Absolutely. so awesome. Yeah. All right, well, that is it for our spoiler zone. Uh, hopefully, you were not... Hopefully, everything's spoiled Totally for you. spoiled. If you hadn't seen Cabin of the Woods but had seen Game of Thrones, we apologize for not giving you a better way to get through all that. But They end up eating it. Tyrion. It's Next really time. a grisly scene. On Game of Woods. Oh, wait. Plus, Cabin, wait. Thrones. Plus, we also saw Do- Roy Dotrice as the pyromancer. Oh, right. Which I no, love. I, I was that very, was really I, great. That was exciting. All right, that's it. Now we're done spoiling. And get off my lawn. <laughs> so long. <laughs>